Now recognize Ms. Ross from North Carolina. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I too want to thank you for your leadership, and uh, you will be sorely missed in Congress. Um, so um, I, I want to appreciate first all of the witnesses acknowledging the problems with the WHO and the Chinese Communist Party during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, Mr. Raskin's not with us today, so I also want to remind the committee that the Trump administration was praising the Chinese Communist Party at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic and wasn't stepping up to the plate to work with our international partners. Um, the Biden administration came in, recognized many of these problems, and thanks to the good work of many of you, um, we have become a better global partner. It does not mean that the WHO should be um, exonerated for not cracking down on the Chinese Communist Party, but the WHO was not alone in believing the Chinese Communist Party at the beginning of the pandemic to the detriment of the entire world and to this country. Um, I do wanna talk about how we should work with the WHO going forward and the value of all of your leadership and any contributions that we make going forward. So um, with our guidance and our leadership, the WHO has worked to improve health outcomes around the world, standing up localized responses to public health emergencies and bol bolstering defenses against deadly diseases. And I'll, we'll talk about some of the ones that Ms. Pace has raised. But in fact, for every dollar we invest in the WHO. The WHO generates a minimum return of $35 in public health benefits. Um, it, Assistant Administrator Gawande, how has U.S. participation in the WHO not just benefited the world, but benefited public health here at home? This is such an important question. Um, there are multiple roles that WHO plays that leads to them improving health and lifespan of billions of people around the world, including Americans, and there are three central roles. One is that they lead collective action to reduce common killers, and we talked about the eradication of smallpox, we talked about polio, but there are many other examples, and, and uh, one that we rely on here at home is WHO is essential for our annual, annual flu shot. The global tracking system has a network of 129 countries, including China, that uh, report on flu, flu, uh, flu upticks, share specimens and data, and that's the way we end up with a, a annual effective flu shot here, and it's important that we participate in WHO to, to maintain that effectiveness. A second example is WHO coordinates action on health threats um, in countries that, uh, uh, where USAID and our other agencies are and, and in places that are not. And, the, um, and they do that through something called the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network. And I can attest to, uh, from ex experience on a weekly basis, responding to news of potential outbreaks across the world, whether it's Ebola, Marburg, potentially unknown causes, that this information is vital for our early action uh, triangulating to other sources when you don't necessarily trust the country source and making sure that we understand what's happening so we can move quickly to stop spread and uh, address issues that protect the lives and economic security of all Americans. And third, we, uh, the WHO brings together global experts for agreed upon norms and standards for treatments and preventions of virtually every medical condition that human beings can face. And the results of that and benefit us in, in a, a variety of different ways. One example is that we, uh, they create the international classification of diseases. And that system where we all call diseases the same thing means that our electronic medical record companies have a, have a global market for, for their um, medical record systems and we're the biggest uh, supplier and, and seller of those, uh, of those record systems because of that common framework that are nego that's negotiated, and there are many examples of these uh, uh, in addition to that. Um, I see my time is about to expire. I'm gonna submit a couple more questions for the record, but um, a couple of you have mentioned PEPFAR. Could um, somebody 
you choose who briefly talk about how important it is that Congress continue to fund PEPFAR? PEPFAR, Congresswoman, is uh, in a collective view the greatest act of uh, humanity in terms of our solidarity uh, to, to the world. I mean, imagine what PEPFAR has done over 20 years, saved 25 million lives, prevented HIV infection from occurring in about 5.5 million uh, children in the world. Uh, before PEPFAR, uh, the face of the devastation that the disease had caused in the world was just uh, 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 frightening. Uh, in a recent commentary, the former president of Botswana stated that in headline, that without PEPFAR, the country would have been extinct by now. We should be very proud of what we, 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 we have done, the values that we've shown, which is the values of our solidarity with the rest of the world, that we care for, for, for the rest of the world, and we are leaders in this, the, the, the discussion we are having today, which is uh, uh, leaders in global health and global health security. It has always also provided a huge platform for uh, the ability for countries to detect and respond to, to other diseases. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, uh, PEPFAR platforms were instrumental in being leveraged to roll out uh, testing for COVID and for the vaccination there. And in other countries where Ebola and cholera outbreaks have uh, occurred, they have been used. And by doing that, they enable these infections to be detected early before they become a threat in our own country. So we are not just helping uh, uh, countries in Africa and the rest of the world, but we are also protecting ourselves by uh, making sure that PEPFAR continues to um, uh, be uh, reauthorized. So I'm really counting on working with you all to, in a bipartisan way to get PEPFAR reauthorized for the next five years so that we get the, the job done. I think our goal is to bring HIV AIDS to an end as a public health threat in six short years, 2030. Thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Now recognize Mr. Clay.